to have y'all, and we just believe that the Lord is going to continue to speak to us and touch our lives and change us. Amen. So if you turn in your Bibles tonight to Philippians chapter 4, it's kind of a verse we started with um, in Sunday school. We're continuing our theme of, of being thankful, of being, of being grateful. Um, I wish I would have asked uh, for a testimony concerning that before we got started, but um, you know, somebody, but basically that, that kind of, what Doug was sharing is pretty much sums that up well. Philippians chapter 4. General Electric Power Company, we used to say. Remember when I was in Bible school, somebody said, Gentiles eat pork chops. I thought, well, that's funny. <laughs> Philippians, gosh. Philippians, Ephesians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Or we could say be anxious for nothing, uh, your translation may say. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Somebody say with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things or think on those things. Glory to God. I mean, I mean what, a, you know, what a great encouragement uh, that the Lord gives us by the Holy Ghost here in the Scriptures concerning uh, being grateful, concerning uh, being thankful. Uh, ver verse um, 6 says, be careful or be anxious for nothing. Has anybody ever been... Anxious, anxious about something happening in their life, or or just worried or concerned, okay, uh, fretting or whatever you want to uh, call it. Well, you know, God has a solution for that, and He gives it to us right here. He says, in all such situations, come to Him in prayer with with petition or with supplication, okay. You know, First Peter uh, uh, five seven says this: Cast all your cares what. Upon him. upon him because he cares or cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you so if, if you if you're one who's given to worry or fretting or such the Bible says look come to me with with your prayers with your petitions okay cast them on me because I care and, and I've done that and, and and I'm sure you've done that before too and and perhaps at times it seemed like well I did that and I don't feel any less anxious or I don't feel any difference taking place well have you went the next step to thanksgiving. He said, with prayers and supplication, with thanksgiving. I mean, you know what I'm saying? A lot of us will come with our prayers and we'll come with, you know, with, with our, our petitions, but are we, are we also coming with our thanks, thanking him because we know he hears us always, because he knows the things we ask for when we, first John, when we ask according to his will, he hears us, and if he hears us, we know we have the things which we ask according to his will, right? So why wouldn't a person be thankful? Th thanks, in my opinion, is an act of faith because I'm thanking him because I know it's already taken care of. I'm thanking him on the front side. That's what faith is. I don't have to see it to thank, to, to thank the Lord for it. It's be, I he said it, I believe it, and I'm confident of it, so I can thank him on the before it ever comes to pass. I'm, I'm talking about including genuine gratitude with our prayers when we pray to the Lord. Amen. I believe if we'll do that, then we'll get some of our, look at verse 6 one more time. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with, say it. With thanksgiving. Let your request be, be uh, made known unto God. And then look, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through uh, Christ Jesus. If we want to increasingly experience the peace of God, look how it comes. Prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And then the peace of God, which passes all uh, uh, understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, we've been uh, working on our 30 days of gratitude. We started on April 1st, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's three days in. And so I, I, I hope you've been thinking, of, to be honest, when today showed up, I had to think for a minute. Think for a minute more. First day, first day I went, you know, wife. You know, I'm thankful for my wife. And I just disregarded everything Dr. Martin said. I'm thankful for my wife every day, but I wanted it to be a special day. Amen. 
Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. So, so we, 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 we embarked on our 30 days of, uh, of gratitude, which coincides with our 30 days of not complaining. Hello? And to do that, I've already figured it out. It takes verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, or whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on those things. If you want to be grateful and you don't want to find yourself complaining, you need to verse 8. <laughs> uh, amen? amen? Glory to God. Uh, so with that in mind, we're going to look at a few scriptures tonight. I don't think we'll go extraordinarily long at all. But um, Luke 17, if you would turn there, we'll start there. Luke, the 17th chapter. I'm so grateful, uh, speaking of, of being grateful for my wife, I'm so grateful that uh, the other day when, when I jumped, you know, jumped in the room and said, hey, we're going to do this, that she, uh, that she said, hey, let's take a little soap time before we get started because I needed that. I don't know about you, but... Since last Wednesday, I have, I have watched, watched my words a little bit better and got myself ready so that when the first came, if it started to rise up, I, I heard it coming. And I was able to quell it. I was able to calm it down before it, before it even, even passed through the gates of my mouth. I was able to calm it down because I had been uh, getting myself ready. And, and hopefully the same uh, in your case also. Luke chapter 17 uh, verse 11 says, and it, and it came to pass as he went, talking about Jesus, to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now it's interesting to me, they asked for mercy. But what they got, what, but God, God's making a connection. No, mercy, healing is mercy. <laughs> Amen. Being cleansed is the mercy of God. Right? Amen. The Lord, have mercy on us. And, and he knew exactly what they were implying, okay? <coughs> Go show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they, as they went, they, say they, 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 they all were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, glory to God, Healed is what they got for asking for mercy. Turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, I don't know, I like the way the Holy Ghost put things. If you just read what I just said, the Bible says it like this if you read it. It says, turned back with a loud voice glorified God. Fell down on his face at his feet. God's feet. <laughs> you catch that? He's glorifying God, falling down on his face at his feet. He's literally falling down at God's feet, whether he knew it or not. Giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Giving him what? Thanks. And Jesus answered, saying, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Jesus says, wait a minute, didn't everybody get healed? Where's everybody else at? I'm telling you, the Bible, the, I believe the Bible shows us God expects us to thank him for, bless, for his blessings on our life. Jesus was, Jesus, uh, Jesus was, an, well, he was expecting some thanks. Where are the rest of them? Where are the rest of them? They are not found to return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Notice the connection. Uh, Jesus referred to them giving glory to God as evidence of their faith. Amen? Giving glory to God is evidence of your faith, friend. In other words, that leper showed uh, 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 who, who his faith was uh, in for the, who he was, had faith in for that healing. God, he was giving glory to God for what had taken place in his life. Okay? God not only deserves our thanks, but I, I believe he desires it. I believe the Lord desires it. I don't believe he sulks if he doesn't get it. Uh, I don't believe he gets his feelings hurt. But let me say it better. He notices. Can I, let me just say it like that. He notices. Jesus healed all ten lepers and took notice of nine who didn't return to thank him. Where are the other nine at? And at that, he says, uh, and it was a stranger 
that gave them thanks. Out, out, the, the one out of the ten was a stranger. How, how many things, giving thanks to Jesus is the only rational, reasonable thing that, that we can do as believers? Amen? It's, 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 a, it's, our, it's the least we can do. I like, I like the way Romans 12, 1 says, it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> it's the least you could do. <laughs> be grateful for the things that the Lord has done for you. Glory to God. We should be grateful and thankful to God for his goodness. Amen. Appreciate it. Not just take it for granted. Okay. How many have taken time this week uh, to, to, to count your blessings? Count your blessings and thank God for everything he's done for you. You know, we got, like I said, these 30 days of, of gratitude. Day one, I, I was thankful. You know, I, I just made an emphasis. I was going to be grateful to my wife, for my wife. You know, the Bible says uh, it, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. And, and, and it has the favor of the Lord on him. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday I was, I was grateful for the Holy Spirit's guidance. John 16 says, how be it when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Today, I, today I, I was sitting there and I, I thought, I'm grateful for my family, my children. The Bible says in Psalms 127, Psalms 127 says that, that the, you know, that the children are the heritage of the Lord. Amen. And the heritage of the Lord. And, and when your quiver's full of them, man, that, that, I mean, that's the favor of God right there. And so I, I was grateful for those things. And that's just day three. I don't know what, you know, it's because day four is showing up tomorrow. And so, you know, I, I take a little time, you know. I asked my children, what, what, what did my son write yesterday? He was thankful for, I, I think it was dinner. I think it was Burger King or something like that. I mean, I mean let's dig a little deeper, <laughs> if you don't mind, son. Let's dig just a little bit deeper than Burger King. <laughs> Glory to God. If we were thankful, maybe more of us would be made whole, like that one leper was. The Bible says 10 were cleansed, 10 were healed, but one was made whole. How many understand there's a difference between being cleansed and being made whole? Cleansed means you don't have the disease no more in the case of leprosy. Whole means if you lost fingers, you have fingers again. Whole. <laughs> understand? Uh, cleansed means uh, if you had leprosy and it, and it took your leg, well, you don't have leprosy no more, but you're still missing a leg. Whole means you have a leg again. Now, I know some people might not like to hear that, but I'm telling you, whole is whole. God doesn't shortchange anything. When he says whole, that's exactly what he means. When he says nothing missing, nothing broken, talking about the peace, the shalom of God, that's exactly what he means. So, you know, uh, shame on us when we, when we take our reasonings and our philosophies and, our, and the rudiments of this world, the Bible says in one place, and we try to, we try to form them into what God says. Let, no, let, God says what he means to say. Glory to God. Thankful. If more of us were thankful for what we do have, perhaps, and instead of complaining about what we don't have. Uh, the trouble with uh, unthankfulness, uh, I believe the Bible teaches us, is that it's ungodly. Being unthankful is ungodly. It's a trait of unbelievers. So look at this. Uh, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I'm just going to begin reading as you turn there. Verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I like that verse. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. In other words, how does faith come? By hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Who you are in Christ, what all God has actually done for you, you need to keep hearing what the Word of God says so you can, it's revealed from faith to faith, so you can truly, truly get a concept of just how right you are with God, just exactly who you are, what He's done in your life. You, you don't get that just, by, just when you get born again and you understand you're going to heaven. You, 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 know, you don't get all that. You get, you, faith comes by hearing. You keep, this stuff is revealed from faith to faith. You keep hearing it, and you keep building line upon line, and you start finding out that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that I'm not. Uh, I, sin shall no longer have dominion over me, that I am who it says I am. Amen. That I'm, that I'm right with God, that God will never foresee. He's not ashamed to call me his brother. Amen. I mean, you, that, that you keep reading that. Faith keeps building, and, and, and then it, the Bible says it's, it's revealed from faith to faith. You don't, 
the more you go on with the Lord, the more you un the more we'll understand righteousness and just how righteous we are. Just what God has done when he became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, I, I, I've tried to wrap my heart and mind around it, but I'm going to keep hearing. And I'm going to keep letting the Bible tell me who I am. Who I am, I'm more than a conqueror. Who I am, that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Who am I? I'm the head and not the tail. Who am I? I, I, I'm, I I'm, I'm a member of the body of Christ and Satan is under my feet. He, he, sin doesn't, like I said, but it doesn't have dominion over me. I, I'm not who I was. I, 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 I'm, faith of faith. Faith of faith. That way when the devil comes and whispers in your ear or uses somebody else to holler at you some garbage, not me. Not me. I know who I am. If you be the son of God. Remember, he tried it even with Jesus. What did Jesus say? It's written. I know who I am. <laughs> he, he knew exactly who he was. Because he, 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 he understood what was written. We need to understand what's written. Because what's written will cause faith to come. But the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, that which may be known of God is manifest in them or obvious in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Notice the connection once again between glorifying God and being thankful. Just like over there in verse uh, Luke 17, where the guy glorified God and was thankful. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain or empty in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Look at the result, church, of, of, of being unthankful uh, to God. Verse 21 says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not, neither were thankful, they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts we're darkened. Friend, when we're not thankful, let me tell you what it does. It messes with your mind. It messes with your mind. Uh, maybe this is one, one of the reasons I was thinking that some people think how they think about things and do the things that they do. I mean, this verse seems to imply that. Uh, that uh, I, I was taking it a little further in, in, my, in my thinking. I was thinking, well, when you don't recognize, give glory to God for what he's done and you're unthankful, uh, who are you giving glory to for it? Probably yourself, so many things. Probably yourself. I mean, if your mindset is, uh, I don't think God's done anything for me to be thankful for in the first place, you would <laughs> But they were unthankful. Thinking they're so smart, look what verse 22 says. Professing themselves as to be wise, they became fools. Remember what we read in Philippians 4, church? In Philippians 4, when we're prayers, petition with, thank, with thanksgiving, what did it say? That it'll keep your mind. Remember that? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind. When we're thankful, you can keep your mind. But when you're unthankful, you lose your mind. Okay? Philippians 4 says you, you, that thankfulness you will, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind. Whereas this says because they're unthankful, uh, they became vain, empty in their imagination. They lost. <laughs> you lose your mind. 2 Timothy chapter 3. saw some people just on the news what little bit of what just minute I watch just the just the, the minute I watched today when I was uh, passing by the TV at the at the gym and, and I was listening to the same people who didn't get the answers that they wanted to hear just with a, with an empty argument <laughs> you know because somebody didn't say what they wanted them to say now now their hero, well, we need to investigate him because obviously, you know, obviously uh, he, can't be the, he can't be the decider. They need to bring it to us. You know, the Bible talks about when you measure yourself against yourself, you're not wise. But anyway, did I say um, 2 Timothy? Yeah. 2 Timothy. 
chapter 3. This know also, see, the Lord wants you to know something, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now understand, when we talk about last days, I mentioned this in Sunday school class, when this was wrote, uh, since Pentecost, we've basically been living in the last days, okay? For 2,000 years, we've been in the last days. Uh, I believe we're in the, the later, obviously we're in the later part of the last days. But to the reader, then, they, were, they didn't think one day is going to be the last days. No, he says, we're in the last days now. The last days begin when, on the day of Pentecost. Okay, this this was this in, in the in what did what did the prophet Joel say? In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your young men will dream dreams, your or, or, or prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Upon my maiden and my handmaids, I'll pour out my spirit. They they understood that they they believed they were living in the last days. Okay, so they were when this is wrote. He's not saying, look, in one day far off in the future, when y'all are dead and gone, uh, this is how things are going to be. No, this is how things were then also. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, or no self-control we could say, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. In other words, perhaps on the outside, they appear religious. But they've denied the, the life-changing power of the gospel on the inside. You know, the Bible says that God doesn't look on the... God, man looks on the outward, but God looks on the inside. See, a lot of these things listed... Well, you wouldn't know it except if you knew somebody's heart. So they're denying the life-changing power of the gospel in their life, you know, but they have this appearance of, of, of being religious. Interesting. Interesting. Notice verse 2. It says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Then it goes on. It's like a progression almost, in my opinion. It goes on to... They're unthankful. And notice that unthankfulness is right next to being ungodly. Unthankful people are complainers. They're murmurers. How that ever work out for people in the Bible? It's not too good, is it? When they complained and they murmured. We borrowed from somebody last week and we, and we said to complain is to remain. I think about that. I think about how they complained and they remained going around that mountain for 40 years. As a matter of fact, those folk never made it in. The, their children were the ones who inherited the promises. Unthankful people are complainers and murmurers. Unthankful people are self-centered people, okay? Self-centered people are never satisfied. They're never thankful for anything. They think they deserve everything. Everything about for men shall be lovers of their own self. And then everything listed afterwards pertains to them. You know why someone? You know why a child would be disobedient to their parents because they think it's all about them. You know why somebody would be unholy because they don't. It's not about God. It's about me. I think of being born in the United States. How fortunate we are. How how much we actually have to be thankful for. Amen. Born in our country, like 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 so many of us in here are. But if we ain't careful, we can take it for granted and not be thankful for it. I watch people all day long who are totally unthankful. Uh, you, you, you just turn on your TV set, you, you'll just see parades of people unthankful, <laughs> ungrateful for, just for, for the country that they live in. God has so blessed so many of us in so many different ways that, I don't know, we might not realize every, all the blessings that we walk in. You know, I mean, I mean golly, somebody might not, you might not realize how blessed you are till the power's out. <laughs> then also. Hot. Well, there's some people. Well, there's some folks hot all the time, and you know what? They have power. They just don't have AC, or they don't have power. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, we're blessed. Or you're hungry. Or you're hungry, and food's just right there in your refrigerator. Or there's none in your refrigerator. It's just uh, you can You don't even have to go a mile up the road and you pass ten or fifteen places that you can buy food for <laughs> uh, or buy food at. You know, just blessed. 
just blessed. I mean, no matter what you're hungry for, you can just about get it any time, any time of the day. I live in Foley, Alabama, but if I want to eat Chinese, <laughs> there's five places up the road that'll give me Chinese or Mexican or whatever. I mean, just blessed. Another thing that makes it hard uh, to be thankful is continually seeing the bad. I'm talking about continually focusing on the negative. It is hard to be a thankful person when all you really focus on is negativity, is, 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 is bad things. That's, that's all yeah, that, that, that your focus is on. It is hard to be thankful. Again, 30 days of gratitude, 30 days of not complaining. How many have had uh, opportunity uh, to complain in the last three days? I have. But I've chose for the most part not to. I had to catch myself a couple times, you know. But it's, but, it's, but it's easier and easier as each day goes by. It's easier to catch yourself. I, I, I can catch it as it's forming up in my mouth. I can catch it. I want to catch it before it even enters my mind. Cast it down like the Bible says. Take it captive. If we're always looking for the bad, you'll find it. I mean, you will find it. It's like the old story of the guy who was moving out west and he came upon a town and the guy was sitting on the edge of town and he asked him, he goes, well, you know, we're looking for a place to settle. What kind of people live here? And he goes, well, what kind of people lived in the town you came from? Oh, they, they didn't care. They were all about themselves. They were, they were just, I mean, it was just grumpy and, and, and this, that, and the other. And he said, well, I expect you'll find the same kind of people here in this town. So the guy said, well, we ain't settling here. And he kept on going. Well, it wasn't much longer and another settler came their way and he pulled up and asked the same question. He said, well, what kind of people are in this town? And the guy, same guy said, well, well what kind of people were in the town you came from? He said, well, man, the town I come from, people loved on each other, cared about each other, did for each other, uh, this, that, and the other. And he looked at him and said, well, you'll find the same kind of people in this town. You'll find what you're looking for. You'll find what you're, what, you're, what you're looking for. If we always see what we don't have instead of what we do have, hello? If you're always looking, if, you're, if your thought always uh, defaults to, oh, I don't have that, or, 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 you know, instead of what you do have, okay, it's hard to find something to be thankful for. Perhaps that's why Hebrews 12, 2 tells us, looking unto Jesus, <laughs> the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Keep your eyes on something, on something else. If we're going to be thankful, we're going to have to first recognize that we have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. So we're practicing being thankful. We're practicing. I, I used the illustration one time about practice. I, I, I asked you, has anybody in here ever heard of Chet Atkins? The famous guitar player, probably one of the best ever lived. Heard of him? Well, you know how he got to be that way? While everybody else was watching TV and outside doing whatever, he was practicing guitar. Michael Jordan. Anybody ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder how he got to be so good. Well, while everybody else was, you know, doing what they were doing, he was shooting free throws. He was, he was slamming basketballs. Y'all remember that, 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 that NFL great Tommy Howard? <laughs> you ain't heard of him? Well, nobody else has heard of him either. Because instead of practicing football, he was smoking dope and acting crazy and this, that, and the other. <laughs> he wasn't preparing himself. He wasn't practicing for what he wanted to do. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Skipping school and doing those kind of things. Church, we can practice being thankful, can't we? Isn't that what we're doing? And the more you practice it, somebody say it. The more you practice it. Well, possibly. If you practice, if perfect practice makes perfect, but what practice makes is permanent. If you practice wrong, then you will permanently do it wrong. If you practice right, or, then you'll permanently do it right. That's what I heard my coach say one time. He said, "Practice makes permanent." And I liked that. If you if you practice good, then you, then, then, then then it'll be good. If you practice bad, well, you just reinforce bad. <laughs> Hello. Ephesians 5, 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that pretty much gathered everything up in that one scoop, didn't it? <laughs> Giving thanks always for all things. 
Colossians 3, 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and, and the Father by him. I'm telling you, God loves our thanks, church. In the Old Testament, Leviticus 7, it was the Thanksgiving offering. That was the only offering that was not required by commandment. It was your choice. If you wanted to give God a thanks offering, you could. If you didn't, you didn't have to. It wasn't, it wasn't mandatory, if we could say it like that. Okay? It was free will. If you were grateful and wanted to bless the Lord and, and show your, your gratitude, and I'm thinking, wonder which, wonder which one God loved the best. <laughs> The one that you were made to do or the one that, hey, I just want to give. I just want to bless the Lord. Or the one that was you, your choice. You could do it if you wanted to or not do it. It didn't matter. You know, as far as it wasn't commanded, it wasn't the law. I mean, how does it make you feel when your children are thankful for something you've done for them? I know how it makes me feel. Or I could say, how does it make you feel when your children aren't thankful for something you've done for them? Maybe you've... You, you, you saved and you scrimped and are you, are you inconvenienced yourself majorly to bless your child because I, most all of us do that kind of thing at some, some time or another. And then they act like they could care less. Huh. <laughs> I think of a God who sent his only begotten son, who so loved us, sent his son to die for us. And, then, and some people could care less. I always like to say it's just a good thing that I'm not the Lord. I, I'm not like you. When, when God said, you thought I was like you, I'm altogether different from you. I know he's a lot different from me because I, I wouldn't act it right. I just say that. Folk would turn down my offer like that. But I'm working on it. I think God feels the same way. Some ways we can show our thankfulness to the Lord. We, you can show your thankfulness to God for forgiving you by forgiving others. How many thankful you've been forgiven? Amen. Well, you can show that thankfulness by forgiving others who've done you wrong or harm. Just like, it, you know, in, in a sense, we did him, but he did it anyway. We, we didn't deserve his forgiveness, did we? Well, no, we didn't. Somebody might not deserve your forgiveness. But we can show God our gratefulness for his forgiveness by forgiving them. We can show our thankfulness uh, to God by caring for others. Doesn't he care for us? I'm so grateful he cares for me. I can show him how grateful I am by caring for others. Just being grateful to God and not taking everything uh, for granted. Uh, you know, we've been so blessed that for the most part, we just expect, and don't misunderstand me, you should expect. You should expect God uh, to bless you. God is the blesser. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be thankful or grateful. And my children should expect my children should expect me to feed them. They should they shouldn't have to they shouldn't have to worry about when they come home if there's going to be something to eat or you know what I'm saying. They should expect that. And as a matter of fact, but it makes me mad when one of them tells me it's your job to feed me. 